Good afternoon and welcome to Webinar Wednesday. We're excited to have over 400 registered attendees for today's webinar, which is eligible for one credit from the ACI. Before we get started, Webinar Wednesday would like to thank our sponsor, Summit Imaging. Summit Imaging is an ultrasound parts and transducer repair company that can quickly address specific technical needs based on a foundation of understanding rapid customer service. Their philosophy is simple, make their customers heroes. You can learn more about our sponsor today by visiting their website, mysummitimaging.com. Let's get started and give one of our lucky attendees a chance to win an ice cooler for answering this trivia question. Which software entrepreneur was born in Seattle? You can answer now using the question feature on your dashboard. While you're answering the trivia question, I do want to remind everyone that you're invited to our fourth annual Imaging Conference and Expo, which will be held July 24 and 25th at the Hyatt Regency Hotel near Washington, D.C. The ICE Conference will bring 400 plus imaging service professionals from across the nation to Washington, D.C. for two days of learning, networking, and the latest advances in imaging. Registration is now open. Receive complimentary admission by using the VIP Pass Compliments of Summit Imaging, which can be found in your Webinar Wednesday workbook. Details and registration can be found online at attendice.com. All right, and the winner of the ice cooler today is Richard Wood. Congratulations. The correct answer was Bill Gates. Our presenter today is Kyle Grozell, Manager in Global Education of Training at Summit Imaging. He manages Summit's program that offers personalized interactive courses on ultrasound systems to healthcare organizations across the country. Kyle, you may begin whenever you're ready. Hello everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us today. Today we want to talk about our software Adepto, as well as other innovations to uh, diagnostics and ultrasound. With us today is also Lawrence Nguyen, or Larry Nguyen, our CEO and founder, and he's going to help us with questions and answers as well as interject for comments on this software. Say hello. Hello, everyone. All right. So jumping into our presentation today, we want to talk about current issues in the market and things that led to this software. Um, we have sophisticated operating systems with limited or no access to service tools available to in-house technicians or any sort of service provider. Legal precedence has been set for these passcodes that lock down those service tools with copyright, intellectual, and licensing issues that surround them. Service information, manuals, you have resources online to help you find them, like the GE Service Library, but really they're not very available. The quality of product has been lowered or has sometimes what we would call like a harvest product where you may be trying to install something that is no longer um, an OEM qualified material. And then even getting that product in a timely manner. Say if you needed a passcode, you might be waiting a long time to get that from either the OEM or some sort of licensed service provider. Having that technical support is part of that problem. Um, having a team available 24-7 isn't really the case with everyone. Um, we dedicate our team 24-7 with online chat. Our new uh, website actually has this feature. Or email, phone numbers, uh, even text message if you'd like. And then a lot of service organizations were dominantly focused on field service, doing the work with their own hands, essentially meaning you have to wait for them to come in and do it. So what do you need to lower your total cost of ownership on a system? You want to quickly diagnose your system failures. You want to acquire quality replacement parts, have them delivered on time, as well as install those parts on your own quickly and easily without a service call or passcodes or waiting a long period of time for, say, a software reinstall. So what is our Adepto software? It's a suite of diagnostic tools and utilities that we made to quickly address the ultrasound system failures. Reading the error logs, reprogramming and configuring replacement parts, as well as backing up and restoring the critical files needed when you have a software issue. This way you can fully service your ultrasound equipment in-house with your own hands. Why we had to create a Depto? Well, it helps clinical engineers diagnose and install these parts 
faster than any outsourced service. We would work on the phone with our technicians uh, for hours trying to help them install something when we could give them the tools on their own laptop to diagnose. It's the legal solution for customers aware of any issues around licensing, copyright, or intellectual property. It's an alternative to OEM diagnostics, and there was none available at the time. And it's also ethical. It removes any liability for healthcare facilities that could be passed on by an independent service organization, or even something as simple as um, passing on service code liability. Why this matters to healthcare facilities? Well, all parties are liable. The owner of the equipment is assuming the unnecessary risk of that IP or copyright. The use of these illegally obtained passcodes is tracked and traceable to the specific dates and times in the software, and it's trackable to who serviced the equipment at that time. So I, I want to interject here for one moment and, and take uh, a, a few moments to really uh, discuss this part uh, that I think the, the market is uh, not so aware of, of these issues because uh, you know many independent organizations that do focus on field service um, you know they're being hired by these healthcare facilities uh, to come in and, and repair you know Philips IE22, IE33, GE nines, Vivid sevens, whatever have you. The whole suite of the of uh, you know the tier one uh, level uh, ultrasound equipment. They're they're all they all have their um, nuances on how to access the diagnostics and what's unfortunate um, out there is that you know the passcodes or, or service dongles or, or tokens or whatever um, is being used to get into the machine diagnostics to install you know particularly the drivers or flash particular boards uh, to bring the system back up to a full functional state uh, to resume scanning uh, the the healthcare facilities that are hiring the outsourced service has no insight into how they're being serviced and we wanted to take a moment to say you know you should look into uh, how your equipment's being serviced by these outsourced companies because if they are using um, passcodes that are infringing on copyright intellectual property and licensing that's all owned by the OEMs that built the software um, and providing it to the people who paid for that service um, the healthcare uh, facility is actually liable because it's uh, the equipment owner uh, that actually the, these activities are being performed on. And when you're looking at how these can be tracked on the machine itself, um, all the machines log in how many times it's been, uh, been used for onboard diagnostics. Uh, and it's very easy for a healthcare facility to pinpoint, hey, if there's a date and a timestamp of uh, um, onboard diagnostics being used when it wasn't supposed to be, then uh, to trace it back to the documentation of the outsourced service call uh, would be a very easy triangulation of you know who, who was performing the activities. So again, just kind of stopping on this point for a moment to uh, to elaborate on that uh, the healthcare facilities who own the equipment, uh, you are the ones that are actually taking on the liability here, and you may not even know it. So back to you, Kyle. Thanks, Larry. Well, I'm sure that actually brings the question to mind, and it's the next part on our slide, is how to know if these service measures are legal. What are the questions you can ask? Uh, you can ask to see a copy of some sort of OEM license agreement for that passcode, uh, whether it be long-term or for single use, and ask for installation procedures that don't infringe on copyright, IP, or licensing. So ask what process will be used to install the new component. So how does Adepto work? How is this different than everything else? Adepto operates on your own laptop using a USB connection and slaving the ultrasound system hard disk. This is important because it's actually accessing the Windows environment on that ultrasound system hard disk, not any of the hardware, firmware, or ultrasound system software that is part of the copyright and IP of the OEM. Yeah. So to, to time out on one, uh, one more topic here is that I uh, just wanted to be very clear that uh, Adepto works within the Windows operating system, and this is simply a slave hard drive, much like you would go to an electronic store and, and buy a USB hard drive for storage, right, Kyle? Mm -hmm. And uh, you would plug a USB connector into your laptop. 
um, with a couple of very common cables. And you essentially use your laptop to work within the Windows environment of these hard drives. And when we're talking about copyright, IP, and licensing issues, um, those are really in that light blue box on the top where the ultrasound system software, a part of that block of uh, information is actually the onboard diagnostics. That's actually lumped into the ultrasound system software that you see here. And because Adepto is not touching that, it's merely operating in the native Windows environment. Uh, we are essentially Windows developers at that point building software that runs on the Windows platform. Yeah. Now, that always raises a question, and what about HIPAA? Patient health information is not accessible and cannot be muted or modified when you're using the slave function uh, to connect to a laptop. The data is actually stored on a different hard drive. No patient health information is accessible or stored via a cloud service. Adepto does not connect to an external environment for any of its uh, services. So none of that information is actually leaving that drive. And it does not retrieve, send, or report on any patient information that it sees on the drive of any kind. So what do you need to run Adepto? Well, you need a Windows laptop uh, running Windows Vista, though I wouldn't recommend it, 7, 8, or 10. Administrator rights or privileges to install the software on your laptop or desktop. And the ability to access removable storage, such as a USB, a hard drive, or flash drive, and read-write capabilities. Sometimes those are separated by your department. You may have to involve your IT department to flex your system in order to work with these requirements. But we found that most uh, biomeds have a laptop available of this type. So what do you do to your hardware to run Adepto? We're going to use an error log video here as an example on an IE22, IE33 system. The simple steps of shutting down the system and removing the hard drive. And yes, we all work this fast at Summit. <laughs> Now at this point, we have a Windows laptop available. We use a USB to SATA adapter, which you'll see here in a moment in the video, along with a cable and power supply. So once we pull the hard drive from the system, we want to pull the main hard drive, the one that actually carries the operating system. Again, the patient data is stored on the other two hard drives that are inside the system. So we're not even going to that data. Yeah, the OEMs have done a really great job of protecting that, uh, you know, patient health information uh, by actually segregating the data to be on different areas um, of the system. So there's a simple USB to SATA adapter. Uses a SATA connection, connects to the hard drive. We then have to power the hard drive independently from the system. So most of these kits will come with a hard drive brick or a power brick to power the hard drive for you. It's very important to plug all these items in before slaving it to the laptop because sometimes the adapter will not parse the drive properly and show you all the partitions that are available on the drive. Now, once we've connected the hard drive, we actually have a demonstration of Adepto running on that laptop. The goal here is to read an error log from a Philips IU22 IA33 system. And after removing that drive and running Adepto to find the actual error log and parse it, it's a total of about seven minutes. Give yourself another five to seven minutes to diagnose and order a new part, and you're actually able to finish your troubleshooting in 15 minutes and have a resolution, whether that be ordering a new part with our technical support team over the phone or flashing a new firmware to an FEC or a part. Yeah, I think this is really important because, you know, a simple function such as reading an error log uh, may or may not be available uh, on your system. 
and Adepto makes it available. So we are actually accessing the, the, the correct files and parsing the, the data in a way to where it's actually legible to a human being. So kind of removing all the code and kind of consolidating it to uh, actually identifying kind of date and time stamps and what's kind of failing in your system. Yeah. And you know what's so important about this is this is instant. You, you don't have to call anybody. Uh, you simply turn on your laptop, slave the hard drive we saw in the video, mm -hmm. and now you're scrolling your error log with, within minutes. And the response time of you know your own clinical engineers that are that are doing this process is it's accelerated. It's uh, you know it's such compressed in such a small amount of time to where you know the the opportunity cost of an engineer spending so much time on one thing is is pretty significant for a healthcare facility. Mm -hmm. And this allows them to move on to the next service call after they diagnosed the part or the part, and now they're kind of ready for the next morning to install that. But you know again here uh, it being so quick. Uh, and, and available immediately to any clinical engineer um, is great. And I think one thing that we found that's been so helpful uh, with this function is not only the ability to do it, but many times, um, you know, sonographers are so busy mm -hmm. that they, they just turn off a machine if they see an error code. And then they just turn it back on and they resume functionality and they continue, you know, scanning all their patients and, mm -hmm. you know, doing a great job that they do. But, you know, it's very hard and, and rare uh, to have them, you know, maybe take a picture of the error with their phone and show it to you. Um, you know, maybe remember what the error is or just saying, hey, uh, this thing popped up and it was weird. I don't know what it was, but I know it was bad. And, and this allows us to go exactly that date and time and pull the exact error code. So we're not guessing during that troubleshooting process. Yeah. It's actually a very uh, a finite and accurate diagnosis for us to, to be able to get that machine back up and going or getting rid of that intermittent problem. Yeah. Uh, like Larry was saying, I think it takes a lot of the guesswork out, but also uh, in the past when we've used the Adepto to troubleshoot error logs, it helps us get to the root cause. Sometimes errors are cascading effects, and it, reading the log as a whole allows you to get down to the actual problem instead of just shooting for the first thing that pops up. And then you might spend three or four days going through different parts or different solutions before you find the root cause, whereas you could have the whole story up front. Next, we want to show you this working on a GE Logic E9 system. Again, it can read the error log after slaving the drive. You run Adepto. It takes about two minutes to parse the log. GE logs are different because they're actually stacked all together, so we want to make it in a nice, easy way for you to read it. And then it starts displaying everything in a nice segmented way, so you can see the error date, the type, and the message that would have been displayed to the user. Whereas before, this would have been a comma-separated comma value file. Uh, quite the pain to read on a system or in code. You're getting your diagnostics done in about 15 minutes and ordering that part and getting your system back up and running the next day. Another tool we built into Adepto is the ability to go into the front-end diagnostics. We're able to tell that into a COM port that is connected to the front of an IE22 or an IE33 and monitor the front end of the system while it boots up. Yeah, now, this functionality is across multiple platforms. It really is just an RJ45 port uh, that is you know, a pretty common uh, port that you can find on all electronics, but you know, we found that uh, getting the, the correct um, configuration uh, with your hyperterminal essentially uh, kind of kicking it back old school with the tools, but you get so much information during the boot that, you know, what we're seeing here um, are really the identifications of the entire front end uh, before the operating system even starts beginning to speak to the front end. And mm -hmm. so, you know, as Kyle was talking about, you know, many errors can be a cascading effect. And just for a lack of a better example, um, on, on an IU-22 or IU-33, the front end controller is always going to report its own error uh, because it is the only board that is connected to the uh, the host or the UMB computers in, in the back end. And because the FEC is really the, the manager of that front end, you're always going to get an FEC error for all front end errors. And so you really have to kind of tease out and understand the nuances between you know a uh, 201 dot whatever it may be versus another 201 dot another whatever it may be to you know really understand is this an aim board failure is this a channel board failure whatever uh, have you 
Um, here we're also seeing some uh, wonderful temperatures and, uh, and other measurements that are occurring on the motherboard itself. Um, so when you kind of look at the onboard diagnostics that you know um, some may have worked with before, you know these are actually the the source measurements um, at the uh, the channel board level or at the motherboard level that is then displayed to you through onboard diagnostics when the, in reality they're very basic functions that can that are displayed through a hyperterminal port. Mm -hmm. So you know for us it was a really exciting tool that we use constantly internally at Summit because it's such an effective tool to accurately diagnose what's wrong with the front end instead of just understanding that it's a front end problem. Well, and it's it's happening live too. Absolutely. You can you can actually keep running this query voltage check while you're say uh, pushing the system through a like a matrix probe, a matrix you can test, see if it's taxing the scan and select yeah. or or port or the multiplexing circuits off and mm -hmm. you know whatever have you. We're going to see it all right here. And it's just a beautiful tool. Mm -hmm. So all of this relates to equipment downtime. You know, a typical case would be a technical support diagnosis. You can get those free and immediate from Summit Imaging. You would order a part. We ship our parts overnight, so you can arrive next morning. And using Adepto, you would do a hardware install. You would do your software install and return the system to service right that morning. Um, sometimes FedEx doesn't show up right away, or maybe your loading dock might hold on to it for a bit. But we're expecting a, a 12 to 24 hour window from first call to repair and back in service as if nothing was wrong. Where a lot of variables start coming into play anywhere else. You may have technical support um, at a cost or at a wait time. You may have a part replacement shipped ground or it may have to come via courier. Or it goes to the wrong location. Or it goes to the wrong location. That one's a little uncontrollable. Then it has to be physically installed. Now, someone in-house could be doing this, or you may have an outsourced service engineer now doing the installation for you. Uh, they would then have to do a software install or some sort of software service, and this could cost anywhere from $1,500 to $2,500 to just do a, a quick visit. And then the system is returned to service. Overall downtime for a situation like this can go anywhere from 24 hours up to a week. 72 hours is even giving it a little bit of time because Technicians for outsourced service might be coming from out of state even. Another critical function is backing up. On GE systems, especially E9, you want to save your configuration files, and Adepto does allow you to do this. This helps with that software side of the service as well. Having that information backed up and ready to go means you can return to service even quicker instead of having to hunt for it or even have a costly replacement of your configuration files. Yeah, so I think in this particular situation we're seeing it for the GE9. Mm -hmm. Adepto runs on um, a variety of um, you know, top tier systems out there. Um, and I think the interesting part here is that you know, when you have like a back-end processor, uh, a UMB assembly, a host computer, um, an acquisition module, the new EPICS, or you know, a BEP on, on the E10s, or whatever have you. Uh, Adepto allows you during your PM to back up you know, system build information. Uh, the build information is important because if there is a failure, um, and by the symptoms and the error codes, you know exactly what the problem is, you don't have to go and open up the entire system to find the part number of what you're looking for. The build of information is available to you to where you can just look at that list of what your build information was from your last PM and, and go ahead and order that replacement part. Um, other items like the license options are uh, is really critical as well. And many times if you're relying on onboard diagnostics to back up your license options when it's a bit too late, uh, many times it won't even boot uh, to uh, a section uh, of your application software to even get access to onboard diagnostics, even if you had the pass keys or the service downloads to, to, get, um, to get permission to use it. And with Adepto, because we are saving the hard drive, uh, we are seeing you know, hard failures, uh, hard down, no power up of back ends of mm -hmm. these systems. We simply pull the hard drive because the, you know, statistically the hard drive is not going to fail. Um, they don't fail very often relative to the rest of the system. But even if it is failing, uh, more often than not, we can still get it to spin. And you can still get it to spin the exact sectors of where these license options and build information sit 
um, are not damaged, just statistically speaking, that they are always accessible, even if the system's hard down. So because we're using a laptop and we're slaving it to a hard drive, we have access to this. Yeah. And the difference here is that because you have access and you can back them up, now you're able to order these parts from anywhere. And because the critical files that you need, you may traditionally need to call the OEM and send them to you. Um, there may be additional downtime uh, because of the response and you know, the OEMs are, are absolutely huge and they're trying to you know, fetch it in their database and get it to you. Where if you have the hard drive in hand, uh, you have it right now. And when you get the part to replace whatever processing unit you're replacing, um, this is one of the files that you could easily burn to a CD and then load it during the installation process and all your services kept in house. You know, a couple of things. Um, you're avoiding the hourly uh, you know, charge of an outsourced service. But number two, um, your downtime is significantly compressed because nobody can get to a machine faster than an in-house engineer. You're already there. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's several benefits to it. And you know, these are the critical files to actually resurrect a machine from scratch. And you know, this is just a, a wonderful tool uh, to actually use during a PM. Okay. Moving on to the next step. After you troubleshoot, after you save configuration, you're going to have to install that new component. So in this example, we're doing a safe configuration on an IE22 and IE33. This is when you've actually installed a new board, say an A board. What we're going to have to do is pull the hard drive, run Adepto. It'll install the new part, which in the past could have been a quite timely process even using the OEM uh, pro, uh, service software, my pardon. And then we boot and test the system. When the system comes up, it'll actually check the new part, validate it, and you can get the system back into service in about 20 minutes, depending on how long it took you to actually physically install the component. Yeah. So that's from tip to tail, right? So I think the video we just uh, saw on the slide is uh, literally how easy Adepto is to run. So you already have the hard drive slaved. Uh, we have antivirus softwares, click yes. And now uh, we're going to go ahead and you know, we have this key that tells a machine that, hey, here's the old part number, here's a new one, run this. Now we click part exchange and click OK and we're done. So at this point, we go ahead and dismount the hard drive from the laptop and then we put it into the ultrasound machine, we power it on. And at that point, the running joke here is that, OK, go grab a cup of coffee and just watch the machine boot a few times and return to service. It's really that simple. Even this one's one boot. The yeah, next this slide is two boots. Yeah, so then this is pretty cool. It, you watch it boot once and you're back into service. So, you know, the diagnostic capabilities, in addition, now this very special feature there where you can actually install any parts that you want uh, when, when you need it, uh, it is going to compress your downtime to a level that, you know, no outsource service can even touch that, that response time because you're doing it all yourself. So our next example, like we were talking about, is flashing replacement parts. Some of these parts require firmware, uh, and they need to match other components in the cart. So after we slave the drive, connect it to Adepto, go through our antivirus, load the flash file, it validates, checks the devices, and flashes them. Now, the actual flash hasn't occurred yet, because it's going to occur when you put the hard drive back into the system, it'll go through a boot cycle. Typically, this is three boots, and on the fourth boot, the system will stay up. All the components would have been flashed, and again, in about a cup of coffee, you're sitting there with a fully functional machine that you can return to service. Yeah, and it's so easy. I mean, this is really, um, you know, trying to minimize the 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 number of clicks occurring during mm -hmm. the experience of using Adepto was feedback from our customers, and yeah, for us, the it was understanding when an engineer is has valid access to the onboard diagnostics that you know oftentimes that the the credentials of the username and the password are are so complex that you know we kind of fat finger them right uh, you know it's you know what's a cap is caps lock on or whatever it may be this is just a few clicks and you're off to the races let alone if you're doing something like 
servicing the entire front of your system, that may require three separate flashes and three separate logins. And you take something that would have been a five minute process and stretch it out over an hour just because you have to do it multiple times. Yep, absolutely right. Now, when we talk about diagnostics, there are some other tools that you have, and we mentioned them earlier. We always want to give a shout out to our online resources. Uh, we actually work heavily on MedWrench trying to answer these questions, as well as the ICE forums. But the GE Service Library is a great way to keep up to date with these items. Third-party lists and video service manuals. We've actually recently moved our entire video service library over to YouTube. So you can now search through these videos on, by searching Summit Imaging on YouTube and get things like this, our service information. These videos help you do full teardowns and rebuilds of the system. When you want to do something like remove an aim board or install a Grilly on a GE system, you can now actually just look at the process online and then use something like Adepto to complete the software function. This is now giving you a full enclosure of that service. You can do it in-house with minimal help, with no outsourced service, and using your own technicians. And really adding another skill to your repertoire without having to go to an expensive service school as well from the OAM. Yep, and this is down to the screw, I mean, to where, you know, the, on all the, the mainstream ultrasound systems, we our technical support team actually has taken the time to build this for the community. Uh, to keep the service in-house for healthcare facilities, because we, we know it's all going that direction. Um, it's just such a great way to lower total cost of ownership is by keeping your service in-house. Um, you know, very, very many factors go into that, but the big ones are, um, you know, equipment downtime, I mean, the opportunity cost of a piece of imaging equipment going down is, is significant, and then literally uh, removing the outsourced service costs is another piece on um, how to lower that total cost of ownership. And you know, oftentimes the, the manuals are maybe hard to get a hold of, and this is just a great way to you know, leverage the one of the largest search engines on the planet is just putting these videos online absolutely free. We're not asking for anything. We're just trying to help the community go forward and keep your service in-house by showing you down to the screw on how to remove and replace all the parts on these machines. And by all means, if you have any requests, please send them over. We also commented earlier on supplier quality that impacts the total cost of ownership. You want to search for someone that has ISO 1345 in the 2003 area. So I think we should talk about that for one moment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the ISO 1345 is critical and we want to take a moment to uh, clarify what 1345 really means because I think it's getting very convoluted out there in the market. And you know, there's there's two of them that you're probably going to be hearing about 1345 and 9001. Uh, 9001 has nothing to do with quality of product. Um, it really is a a very simple customer feedback system, and that's it. Uh, mm -hmm. There's nothing to do with medical devices or nothing. There's nothing to do with products. It is simply uh, a feedback system that has some formalities and some uh, guidelines around it to where you know a simple gas station, a daycare, uh, could be ISO 9001. Um, and so it's a very small system relative to the 1345. 1345 is, is medical device, and it actually controls the quality of medical devices. And the scale relative to a 9001 is probably at least 15 times larger than a 9001 uh, because its focus is not necessarily customer feedback. Its focus is quality of product and continual improvement of quality of product that you're working on. And when we look at the 1345, um, it can be sculpted in as few different ways, but you know, if you have any further questions about you know, what is the QMS of a certain supplier, um, you can ask uh, for the scope of, of their QMS. But when we're actually talking about just uh, at more of a 30,000 uh, foot level, of 1345 versus 9001, uh, I think the 9001 really is a moot point in, in our industry. It, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the 1345 is really uh, the, the certifications of QMS that healthcare facilities should be requiring at this point. It's, it's a minimum. Yeah, it, it is the minimum. 
Yeah. Now we talk about IPC. It's Certified Component Level Repair Technicians, but it's also a train of thought. We take the time here to educate our technicians down to new levels. They can go through different courses with our on-site trainer that we took the time to actually send out to the school. And we now can teach classes in-house on all of these component levels that we might be having happen to these boards, but we can do it at a consistent way. And I think that's really important to show that the technicians are qualified to work on surface mount technology, fine pitch wire repair. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all of these things are, are very um, intricate work. And it also shows healthcare facilities that the work is being done in-house and that, you know, uh, harvesting and brokering, it's impossible for their technicians to be IPC certified because there's no need for it. Yeah. Um, and then the quality of the organizations that are taking the time to repair to component level, which you can triangulate that their testing is more thorough. And if the testing is more thorough, then you're going to have less DOAs and less failures. Um, the quality is higher. Yeah. And so, you know, that equipment uptime is everything to, you know, lower that total cost of ownership for our customers. I'm going to talk briefly about what is a ROHS, ROHAS. It's like a European standard for chemical safety. Most importantly, leaded solder is not used in our facility, and we take the precautions to dispose of electronics in a safe and non-harmful way to the environment. Yeah, our international customers have really uh, pushed hard and required that of, of everyone. So, yeah. you know, Rojas combined with that 1345 is really, you know, the, the two minimum standards to, yeah. to work in the, year, in the EU. All of these work together to minimize your dead-on-arrival parts. We've heard of this as one of the largest pain points in the market. You try to install that new component the next morning, and it just doesn't turn on anymore. Yeah, it, it actually, you know, the engineer is put in a precarious situation. Mm -hmm. It's like, is that, is my part dead or did I troubleshoot the wrong thing? So you really have to start over. You okay. cannot move on with your troubleshooting process because you have no confidence in the part that showed up. Or worse, that I break it. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, we specialize in single part solutions too. Our, our technical support team plays a role in this, and I kind of mix the two points together, but when we're working with you on the phone, we're trying to get you down to that one component that we can ship you overnight to have your system up and running right away. Not a hero kit. While they are available, a hero kit sometimes means buying five parts in order to solve a problem when only one of them was the failure. This also helps you avoid that outsourced service cost. Because you're not having a large plethora of parts arrive on your doorstep, it's a lot more obtainable to tackle this machine with your own hands. <laughs> they can also arrive on time mm -hmm. because it's not a shipping container full of items arriving at your doorstep. And overall, all of this leads to a minimized equipment downtime, meaning that you can get these systems back into service and back working on patients as quick as possible. Yeah, and I think this is where we're seeing a big movement in the market to where, you know, price is, is really uh, dropping in its priority because, you know, oftentimes that price may, may reflect poor quality. And, you know, when you're, when you're saving a few hundred dollars on, on some parts or, or probes, you know, if you have to buy it twice as many times, then obviously that total cost of ownership starts to increase. And then you start adding in the soft costs of, you know, opportunity cost of system downtime or equipment downtime. And it's really a geometric growth from in, in the wrong direction at that point when quality isn't controlled and maintained. Okay. Well, again, just a quick thank you for participating. We're going to move into some Q&A. And uh, yeah. you got some questions already for us, don't you, Jane? Absolutely, Kyle. The first one I want to get started with is a great attendee question. Where can I get a depto and how much is the cost? Our technical support team is on deck 24-7 to help you get a depto. We actually don't charge anything for the regular service engineer to call us in, use our technical support, um, and actually work with us to install it. We simply ask that you give us a chance at your business. Great. We do have quite a few attendee questions that have come in, but before we get to the next one, I do want to remind everyone, uh, you do have an opportunity to submit your question anytime using the chat feature or the question feature on your dashboard. Again, we're going to try to get through as much as time will allow if your question is not addressed on the webinar. 
we will send it over to the seventh team right after this webinar for them to follow up offline. But Kyle, the next question from the attendees, what other legal alternatives are there? Well, I'll take that one. The other legal alternatives is, is to, you know, work with your OEM. You know, for, for us, you know, we're all about, you know, really doing it the correct way. And, you know, if you really need the onboard diagnostics, you know, there, there's always, um, you know, methods for you to obtain a license from the OEM to work on your own equipment. And, you know, we, it's, that's up to you and your relationship uh, with your local rep. But, you know, as far as outside of OEM diagnostics, Adepto is the only other alternative. Perfect. This question came up during the first video that you showed. How can we identify primary hard drive? The primary hard drive is usually labeled as hard drive zero. Yeah. On newer systems like the GE9, there actually is only one drive in the system. Yeah, and you could also, you know, depending on the infrastructure of the computer of the ultrasound systems, uh, you know, funny enough, we're actually working on this in other imaging modalities as well, but that's not part of this webinar. But mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, our tech support team is absolutely ready to instantly answer those questions for you of which one is really the operating system. But a technical way of doing it is actually slaving the drive that you think might be the one. Um, and looking at the file structure, and typically your C drive, it might show up as a D drive because C drive might be taken. Adapter up actually checks. Yeah, but Adapter will check that. But you can surf the drive, and, and, and when you open it, you can look at the volumes, and they'll say operating system, you know, or OS. Uh, that stands for operating system. Uh, that's, that's one way of doing it. And the other rudimentary way of doing it that's not as reliable is you chase the SATA or IDE cable to the motherboard. And if you can chase it down, which one's the primary hard drive, uh, hard drive one, two, or three, or master slave, it'll have one of those uh, uh, labels on the motherboard itself, and you can figure out which one's the main one. Uh, also, worst case, Philip still puts a sticker on there that says primary. <laughs> yeah, it says primary on it sometimes, yeah. That's great. The next question, did you select the model type when you connected the USB drive, or did the SW read the system type? the software actually identifies the system on its own. Yeah, there, there are some checksums that Adepto does when you uh, click on check drives. Um, there, there's several versions of uh, Adepto. There's Adepto Hero Pack Orange, Hero Pack Purple, um, and, and Hero Pack Teal is coming. Orange uh, works on the, the Philips suite of systems. Uh, Purple works in the GE suite of systems. Teal is going to be working on the Siemens suite of systems. And, you know, in, in particular, uh, when you are doing that, uh, we've actually programmed into Adepto when you're checking for the drives. It will actually identify what it's working on. So it removes that human error to accidentally uh, do anything on these things, uh, on these systems. Because we're very careful to, to restore these hard drives and the files, you know, much like the repair business, if we're outsourcing service or you're doing the service in-house, we all kind of abide by the FDA regulation that you must return to OEM specification. Uh, we're doing the exact same thing for software to where it's being ret returned to OEM specification as if you use the onboard diagnostics to do all of your, uh, your work. So, yeah, to answer the question, uh, Adepto will automatically identify what it's working on and ensure that we're not accidentally running the wrong functions on the wrong system type. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Next, next question. Is there no language in the OEM's licensing agreement that states you shall not use third-party software to read or write data to or from any piece of the system? And if so, is the system relying on the lack of traceability? So, loaded question. Um, first and foremost, uh, going back to the slide of actually breaking down the hard drive of, you know, what is uh, licensable by the OEM and the copyright and the IP, and, and that's around their software. And, you know, just to be clear, we're working in the Windows environment and we are really Windows developers, and there is no language around working uh, within the Windows software. Uh, obviously, anybody can build software for the Windows platform and, you know, millions of us do. And the licensing and the copyright of that is surrounding um, the proprietary software that uh, a part
part of that suite, uh, for example, for GE or Philips or Siemens or Toshiba, mm -hmm. is the application, ultrasound application software that generates the image and the onboard diagnostics. Can I put those two pieces together? That's the software that they're writing. Um, when it comes to you know, looking at the Windows files, uh, you know, surfing the files using Internet Explorer or Notepad or anything in the Windows uh, embedded systems, um, that's, that is all um, open environment to any Windows developer. Great. I, I have a couple of questions that are touching on the same point, so I, I'm going to group these together. Will there be a list provided of what manufacturers this will work on? And with that, will there be a list provided of what type of imaging systems this will work on? Yeah, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to circle back um, and we can actually deploy those lists to, to everyone um, to, you know, basically give you a capability matrix of, of what uh, Depto can help you with. Yeah. I love this question. Do we have to buy our parts from you if we're using Adepto? So, in short, kind of. And what we say is that, you know, we, we want to focus our, our support efforts to, um, you know, healthcare facilities and, and asset management organizations that are taking care of these facilities to have all of this flexibility to service the, service the equipment in the hospital. And in return, uh, you know, we do give licenses to our customers that come back on a repeat basis. So do we expect that you buy everything from us? No, but we sure would like you to and, and hope that the effort and the R&D uh, to go through and build the software for you and, and kind of giving it to you for free at times, that you would return the favor and, and um, you know, be loyal to purchasing your parts from us. Mm -hmm. I think the word free has blown the minds of several attendees. I'm getting uh, several questions. You mean this is actually free? Uh, and one question here, so how do we get the software? Can we call and just get it before there is a problem? It would be nice to try it when we're not in crisis. Uh, yes, absolutely. So if you look at the, the final slide here, it's, uh, you know, tech support at mysummitimaging.com, info at mysummitimaging.com. Go to our website. There's a little chat box in the bottom or there's many contact forms on there. And just ask about Adepto and we'll immediately reach out to help you. Um, there's uh, a couple of different things that we can do. It's so easy to use that uh, we can help you over the phone. Our tech support does it every day with new customers. Uh, but Kyle, he can fly to you and show you and help you get you know geared up and suited and booted with Adepto on what you need to to do and you know a, a, a quick training course because it doesn't take more than an hour or two to learn how to use Adepto. I mean it's just it's literally a few clicks and we're just kind of more talking about the context in which you would use it because it does replace all the critical functions that you would need to to fix your system. Exactly. Um, and then you know there's also training classes here. You can come to our class. So our general ultrasound class uh, uses Adepto. But then from there, we can come to you. Um, you know, we're, we actually have a, a nice class in, uh, going down to California next week, and we're training a whole bunch of engineers on how to use Adepto uh, to, you know, to, to fix all of their uh, equipment in-house, because uh, that was one of their objectives for 2017. Great. One attendee would like to know, do you have currently, or are you planning to cover Europe with your great service? We do cover Europe, and you know it's just working with our partners over there for the logistical challenges, uh, you know, kind of getting over the the Atlantic. But absolutely, I mean, our Adepto software, I can email this uh, and connect them to our cloud service to activate it anywhere on the planet at any time. Uh, so yes, we we do have customers uh, all over the planet using Adepto. Mm -hmm. Helped someone just in Britain last week. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned creating a backup for Adepto. Is it a selection, and where is the backup saved? So the backup is, is literally a backup button on Adepto when, once you slave a hard drive. And from there, it opens up the Explorer window, and you select where you save it to. Much like downloading any file from the Internet, right? It would pull mm -hmm. that same dialog box. Where do you want to put it? Send and it to your desktop, documents. documents. Yep.
I have an attendee wanting additional clarification. So do we have to take a class to be able to use Adeptive? No, absolutely not. Perfect. There are a few additional questions in queue, but uh, guys, I'm going to send those over to you offline since we're getting close to the 60-minute mark for the webinar today. Um, of course, I want to give a big thank you to Kyle and Larry of Summit Imaging for their time and their information today, and thanks to the sponsor, Summit Imaging. Again, their website is mysummitimaging.com. One lucky attendee will win lunch for their whole department. Details on how you can be this lucky attendee will be in the post-webinar survey, which should appear on your screen shortly once we're done today. If you do not see the survey, please email us at webinar at mdpublishing.com. Yes, you must complete the survey to obtain your certificate of attendance. We do have webinars weekly through the month of May. You can see a complete calendar by visiting onetechnation.com forward slash webinars. All right, guys, hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon. We'll see you back here next week at 2 o'clock.